I'm Tony Sklar with BNet TV. We are here at the M Health Summit in Washington for 2012, and it is my pleasure to be speaking with Dr. Francis Collins, director of the NIH. How are you today, sir? I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the opportunity and, of course, coming on the show, and it's great to speak with you again. So my first question out of the gate to you is, you and I spoke for the very first time on my part three years ago, which was yes. my first M Health Summit. Yeah. Uh, and of course, here we are today, three years later. Tell me a little bit about the growth of this industry and was it what you expected? I think it's phenomenal, uh, the rate of growth of this industry and of this meeting with now more than 4,000 people turning up for what was originally thought to be, you know, a fairly narrow field of interest. <laughs> But the time has come to bring these remarkable technologies uh, to health applications in all kinds of creative ways, and we've certainly seen that happening. My main message uh, being here is to cheer for that, uh, to say NIH is extremely interested in supporting research on these technologies, and also to be sure that everybody gets it in terms of the need for that rigorous research to demonstrate what really works. The technology is cool, but we have to have the evidence that it's actually changing outcomes. Otherwise, the field won't have the real promise that it deserves. So at the top of the list, obviously, we're talking about policy, efficacy, and uh, the, you know, the original R&D that inevitably ends up being uh, the control policies in place. And particularly, it's talking about conducting a rigorous controlled trial of a particular M Health application to show that it works. Because we've misled ourselves down through history so many times about saying, well, you know, bloodletting is really going to be good for you when you have a bad disease. It didn't turn out that way because nobody actually tested it. It was just sort of part of what we think. Now, I'm not complaining, complain, comparing bloodletting to uh, M Health, but there are certainly <laughs> things that people put forward that sound good, but when you begin to test them in the real world, they don't actually change the outcome. And we need to be sure we find that out. It's interesting, if you look in the literature of published studies, you can only find 20 where actually an M Health application has been rigorously tested in a randomized trial where you basically give a whole bunch of people random, either they get the application or they don't, and you look to see whether it makes a difference. Only 20 with a field that's growing very rapidly. We really have to get this going or we could end up with a whole lot of technology and a whole lot of confusion about exactly how should we be implementing this across the board for prevention, for health maintenance, for disease management. We've got to get the data. So let's talk about what types of data we would use for different sets of devices and or platforms. And of course, when you add in uh, monitoring devices, I think that you know, we've got some separate categories mm -hmm. that we could talk about. Do you feel that there should be different sets of rules or trials for devices that may not be um, life altering? or a device that may be only empowering the user with data flow that comes from their own body versus something that could be relied upon as if it, you know, if it fails, there's going to be an event. Uh, obviously, the importance of the rigorous data goes up even higher if the stakes are very high in terms of somebody's medical health. So if you are giving somebody an mHealth application who has a heart problem, and you're counting on that to sound an alarm if things start to go south, it better darn well work, and you better be able to show in a trial that that actually reduces the number of bad outcomes. If you're talking about something that is a, an aid to help people who are trying to stop smoking successfully do so, well, you still want the data. It's not enough to say, I got this cool app, and if you just uh, stick it on your iPhone, you'll have a tool here to help you stop smoking. Did it actually work? Did you increase the number of people who were able to successfully quit? If not, then why are we doing it that way? Let's find a better way. But you need the data in both places. There's no substitute for data. There's no substitute for evidence. The plural of anecdotes is not data. You really want to have data you can be confident is fully objective. For 2013, what are some of the objectives that the NIH is going to put into place to help grow this particular ecosystem or portion of the ecosystem? Well, we have become an increasingly large supporter uh, of mHealth research. Uh, in 2012, 
We funded 200 research grants. Uh, that's up from a handful uh, five or six years ago, reflecting what's happened with the field. And it continues to go up. And most of those grantees are actually in small businesses, uh, some in academia, but the majority are small businesses. And we're excited about that. We have a whole program uh, called the Small Business Innovation for Research, SBIRs. And we think this is a great grant mechanism for companies you can get fairly rapid turnaround in your request. You get an initial phase. If it goes well, you can ramp up to a larger grant award. Uh, companies that are interested in this definitely should uh, get a hold of us, go to our website, learn about the SBIR program because we can help. We will be particularly looking, though, for applications that are not just about developing the newest technology, but testing it in a real situation to see what its benefit is. Do you believe that there should be a decrease in bureaucracy within the overall overtone of the government systems that are involved when, you know, those testings and those trials to allow innovation to, to, uh, to grow, but without compromising health in general? What a question. No, I think we should increase bureaucracy. <laughs> it's such great well, stuff. a little bit loaded, but okay. <laughs> it's awesome. The more bureaucracy we have, the better off everybody. That's right. Is. Right. I'm from the government, and I'm here to make your bureaucracy worse. <laughs> no, of course. we got to streamline things, uh, but we have to do so in a way that doesn't compromise the rigor of the data or the human subject's protection. If we're asking people to participate in trials where they're putting themselves at some sort of a risk, uh, they need to know what that's about. But we're all about uh, trying to knock those barriers down and try to do things faster, better, and cheaper. Deeper. And I think we're making some strides in that regard. And then finally, Dr. Collins, I want you to, did you have a chance to walk on the floor? I did. And did you see anything that you would pick up and you would say, you know what, wow, that was, that was very innovative and that looks like something that could be, uh, that could go quite far within the medical or health field? I saw a lot. I'm particularly interested in the technologies that people are developing to do real-time home monitoring of blood pressure. Blood pressure is such an important thing to be able to keep track of, with hypertension being such a common disorder and one that we have trouble actually managing effectively simply by having people go to the doctor's office, which is not a good sample of what your daily blood pressure is doing. If we could get those kinds of monitoring systems reduced to practice, where you could do 24-hour monitoring and have that automatically sent to the physician so you could really tune the therapy, that would be an enormous advance in terms of preventing heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, and many other things. I think that is, uh, I think that is fantastic. I tend to agree with you. Dr. Collins, thanks very much for taking the opportunity to speak with us. I hope to do this exact same thing next year and see <laughs> the even further progression this industry has taken. I will look forward to that because I have a feeling a lot's going to happen. I've been speaking with Dr. Francis Collins, director of the NIH here at the M Health Summit in Washington, D.C. for 2012, and I am Tony Sklar with BNET TV.